Barb as well. So I am delighted to introduce my guest today. Barb Bruno is the author of High Tech, High Touch Recruiting, How to Attract and Retain the Best Talent by Improving the Candidate Experience. She's an internationally recognized recruiting expert who has a proven track record of helping recruiters and talent acquisition professionals become more successful and less stressed. She has created several popular LinkedIn learning courses and is president of Good as Gold Training, HR Search, and Happy Candidates. With that brief introduction, welcome Barb to the executive stage. They are all yours. Well, thank you, Tony. And I want to thank Executive for actually inviting me to do this master class. And the only thing I want to start with is I know you're taking many classes. There's a lot of information out there. And I'm going to share seven specific challenges today. But I want to challenge you to come away from my program with three ideas that you're going to implement. I know how valuable your time is. We're all stressed with so many jobs to fill and not a lot of candidates out there that are looking for work. And so as we're discussing these challenges, if something resonates with you, please write it down because your time is valuable. And the way to make get the highest return on your investment of time today is to implement some of the things that we're going to discuss today. So let's get into the program. The competition for top talent continues to escalate. I'm sure that doesn't surprise anybody on this phone. And this has been compounded by their demand for flexibility. You're facing new candidates reality an escalation of problem areas and new challenges, and new challenges are hitting us almost week by week. Have you ever had a candidate no-show an interview or ghost you, turn down an offer, accept an offer and then not start, or accept a counter offer? If you answered yes to any of these problem areas, this masterclass was created for you. Now, I think it's important for you to realize that you cannot control what candidates do or say. You know, I, I have people ask me all the time, how do I control candidates? You can't. You can't control another human being, but there, there are actions you can take that can drastically reduce these gut-wrenching occurrences, and you have 100% control over how you react to things. And sometimes in the talent acquisition and recruiting profession, it's best for us not to react, to just choose not to react to things. Today, we're going to discuss seven challenges. First of all, the current candidate realities, and these keep changing. No shows are ghosting. Challenge number three is no starts or offer turndowns. Uh, four is counter offers. Five is engagement. Six is retention. And seven is flexibility and growth. Too often we experience problem areas and as a result, we blame others. But every time you point the finger at someone else, three fingers are pointing back at you. In fact, last Friday, I put an article on my LinkedIn feed basically saying when we're blaming everybody else, is there something we missed as recruiters or talent acquisition professionals that could have prevented the problems? And I had over 25,000 hits by yesterday. Some people agreed with me, some people didn't agree with me, but I think it's tough to blame ourselves sometimes. But again, you know, when you blame people, if things keep happening this over and over again, if people keep accepting counter offers, it's not necessarily the bad behavior of the candidates. It's something that you're missing. And so we've got to change the way that we're interacting with candidates. And again, you can't control candidates or hiring managers. You can't control what they do. You can't control what they say, but you can control how you react. And that's very empowering because I think most of us feel very overwhelmed right now. We're trying to fill so many jobs. The job market is really going at a very fast pace right now, but there's also steps you can take to all but eliminate a lot of the gut-wrenching challenges. So let's get into them. Challenge number one is current candidate realities, and this is realities as of right now. I do training for LinkedIn Learning. I have access to a lot of their big data, and we share a lot of information so that I can keep the, my audiences up to date. Obviously, candidates are provided guarded, guarded answers during interviews. You know, first interviews are like a first date. You're a stranger they don't know or they don't like, you know, and maybe they haven't had a positive experience in the past. So, you know, they're providing guarded answers. They reach out to their personal professional networks for leads. They review website postings and job board ads only if they're in an active job search. They schedule multiple interviews. They consult family and friends for advice, even though family and friends have no experience in the recruiting profession at all. They increase their salary demands as the process goes on. So often what they say they'll accept is not what the dollar amount ends up being by the time they get through an interviewing process. They will often change their parameters. And again, these are human beings we're dealing with. That's the challenge of recruiting. We have people on both sides of what we're doing. And so they will change parameters because life happens. 
they will not welcome your opinions. They don't want to hear your opinions. They will not necessarily listen to your advice. They will almost always receive more than one offer. They will be enticed by their current employer to accept a counter offer. They will sometimes shop a job offer. They get a job offer. They go to other companies they're talking to and shop it. They will change their demands. Um, if they don't see the benefit in talking to you, they will hide behind technology. Um, and if you find yourself saying people won't talk on the phone, they'll only communicate by texting and emailing, that's because they don't see the benefit in talking to you. People will communicate with you. People will talk to you, but only if they see the benefit to them. Every person, every candidate we talk to has a tattoo on their forehead, and it's W-I-I-F-M. You've always got to show people how it benefits them to interact with you. It benefits them to talk to you. And many candidates will continue interviewing even after they've accepted an offer or they've started a new job. It's for these reasons that you're often going to contend with no shows or ghosting, no starts or offer turndowns, counter offers that are accepted. And by the way, you know, if an employer, you know, doesn't extend a counter offer when the person hands in their two week notice, they might replace the person, but the replacement doesn't work out. Or maybe after a month or two, they haven't been able to replace your candidate. And so many counter offers are coming 30, 60, 90 days after somebody starts. Uh, the lack of engagement. There's a tremendous lack of engagement right now. And of course, costly turnover. Um, you know, if you ask companies what are their, their biggest challenges right now, it's not only finding and hiring the best talent, it's getting that talent engaged and so they become retained. And the demands for flexibility and growth are stronger than they've ever been before. You know, and rather than discuss the reasons for these challenges, um, what I wanna do is I wanna go on the solutions that'll help you improve rapport and loyalty so you can dramatically eliminate or at least reduce the amount of these occurrences. So let's go into the challenges. Challenge number two is no shows or ghosting. Solution number one would be you've got to listen more. Guy gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. We have to talk one third of the time and listen two thirds of the time. We've got to talk less. We've got to learn how to focus on the priorities and the hot buttons of each candidate. Because again, candidates don't think we care about them. Another reality that I didn't put on the list and sort of a sad reality is when I'm talking, I do a call for job seekers once a week, and they don't think that we care about them. They think that recruiters and talent acquisition professionals only care about the job they're trying to fill. 